Okay, uh, thanks for the time. Okay, uh, in this topic, uh, we will explain about the NDB operators uh, to deploy uh, NDB uh, clusters on the Kubernetes. As we know that uh, NDB clusters is uh, clustering a shared nothing architecture. It is based in memory, means that data will be stored in memory, in distributed, okay, mem in memory data set. And then it is always, always on with 99.999% uh, system high availability, super highly available and also um, always consistent because all nodes in NDB clusters are read write different with you know, DB clusters that we just explained just now. In NDB clusters, every node are read write and always consistent. And it's ma massive linear scales with in-memory extreme performance. And what you get by running your database in NDB clusters? First is performance. Uh, read write scalables, okay, because all nodes are read write, then uh, you can get more throughput by adding more nodes. Read write throughputs by adding more nodes. And then it is real time in memory, okay, as we know that memory can give uh, better response times than IO to the disk. And super low guaranteed latency. So this NDB cluster is designed for super uh, low latencies applications, mission criticals in terms of performance, and data will be automatically shut across the you know, DB clusters, NDB clusters nodes, okay, and uh, it makes, uh, you know, partitions uh, available by default in NDB clusters, and this elastic, you can change, uh, you can add uh, nodes uh, easily in NDB clusters. Secondly, you, you will have a consistency, it is always on, uh, read write scalables, okay, there is no like, you know, uh, data to be like in a, in a waiting stage, okay, the moment data is committed and the, the data will be available on all nodes and always consistent. In, in fact, uh, this is asset compliance, okay, durability is um, provided by a uh, checkpoint, yeah, uh, there is a local checkpoint and global, uh, global, check, uh, global checkpoint to make sure that the data that reside on memory uh, will be backed up uh, to the disk. Third is uh, NDB cluster support SQL and NoSQL, and it is highly available, completely super highly uh, available, yeah, with 99.999% system high availability, and I will show it to you later on. Okay, this is the NDB cluster architectures. Uh, we have NDB clusters consists of multiple data nodes over here uh, to store data in memory and completely consistent. And on top of that, we will, you know, uh, NDB cluster has, uh, you know, various options to uh, connect uh, to the uh, NDB clusters data nodes uh, below. So uh, you can write your own code using Java or using C++ and execute NDB API to, you know, query, uh, read and write data on the NDB uh, clusters. Or if you have, you know, I mean, majority of the application is using SQL interface to communicate with database. So NDB cluster have SQL nodes, yeah, has SQL nodes, okay, where the application, SQL based applications can connect to the SQL node uh, as if it is connected to the, um, you know, uh, normal MySQL. Yeah. When I say normal MySQL means that, you know, normally MySQL is, um, you know, application just connect to the MySQL and then do a SQL query and so on. So, um, NDB clusters, uh, general architecture consists of three different uh, types of nodes. The first is management node. Okay, management node, uh, you know, uh, actually store the configuration data of all nodes, basically. And um, it's uh, controlling the cluster membership as well as uh, acting as arbitrators, acting as uh, arbitrator uh, if there is any network partitions that, you know, potentially uh, causing split brains. So management node will help uh, to mitigate uh, that issue. So um, second type is data node. Okay, data node is uh, uh, the, uh, running the NDB uh, engines, okay, to store data uh, completely in memory, unless you define uh, one or two columns in the table to store uh, data to the disk, but that's not uh, something that usually people do. Okay, um, usually they store everything uh, in data memory. 
and 30 smart scale servers uh, so that the applications okay can connect to um, the SQL nodes yeah the SQL node and uh, if the application commit uh, data uh, transactions on the SQL nodes then the data is actually stored in the data nodes if the uh, table objects, yeah, the, the tables itself uh, use in ODB, uh, sorry, uh, MDB storage engine, sorry. Okay. So this is the architectures, okay, the high availability architecture. In this example, we have four MySQL servers, okay, all are with white. There is no failovers, all those things, right? Like an in ODB clusters, there is no failovers because all is with white. Uh, an application can use uh, MySQL routers or any load balancer that you like, okay, to spread the load across the MySQL servers over here. But this MySQL servers does not store data locally, but it is storing the data to the data nodes behind, and the data will be stored as a memory. And we have uh, four data nodes over here that split into uh, multiple data node groups, which is not group zero and not group one, okay. So minimally, minimally, we can have uh, one node groups, yeah, which is node group zero. But if we have uh, data size more than data memory, then we need to uh, distribute the data okay, to the second uh, node groups. If uh, data grows, then we can have another data groups, and data will be shared across. And within the node groups, uh, we can have one to four uh, replicas. And they are fully uh, consistent. And we have one, two management nodes. Yeah, we can have two management nodes, one primary and one standby management nodes. Okay. How about if we have major outage on the NDB clusters? Since NDB clusters is fully redundant, then if we have a lot of nodes within the NDB clusters having uh, problems or outage then NDB cluster will keep up and running as long as the data is still complete. The full set of data will still be there. Let's say, for example, data nodes um, 2 and data node 3 having a problem that we, the, the data node 1 and data node 4 still have a full set of data, then this installation, this architecture, NDB cluster is still up and running. Even though the management node is down completely, it's still up and running because the management node only use uh, for, um, in this case, only use for starting up the uh, 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 the NDB clusters nodes. Yeah. Once it is starting up, it will look for the management node to get uh, pa uh, parameters okay, uh, for these nodes to starting up. Otherwise, it will still up and running. Okay. So uh, if our data uh, is uh, growing and uh, one node group is not sufficient, then we can have another node group. Yeah. And data will be shared across. Okay. Back to the topics. Okay. Today's topic is about running the NDB clusters on Kubernetes. Okay. Um, now, modern application is developed using microservices. Okay. Running on cloud native, uh, where the uh, monolithic applications is you know um we 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 break the i mean monolithic application we chop the monolithic application to become smaller and run this um smaller applications okay as microservice uh, running on top of uh cloud native platforms like kubernetes and uh, rest api become norms used by uh, the modern applications for microservices to um communicate and interact with each other. So based on survey connected by JetBrains, uh, it is evident that microservice and REST gain popularity nowadays. And uh, based on survey connected by CNCF, okay, uh, it shows that a majority of the uh, uh, companies right now at least uh, think or have, you know, uh, cloud native uh, environments in their organization itself, in their organizations. Okay. So <clears throat> based on CNCF survey, 82% um, of organizations deploy a massive uh, cloud native uh, environments uh, running uh, microservice on top of Kubernetes. So uh, this is like uh, 
you know, high levels uh, Kubernetes uh, architecture. So basically, Kubernetes has uh, Kubernetes working nodes and Kubernetes control planes. Uh, basically, control plane consists of multiple uh, Kubernetes worker nodes. The work, uh, sorry, master node, not worker node. I'm sorry. Yeah. So control plane consists of multiple Kubernetes uh, master nodes. So in Kubernetes worker nodes, we can spin uh, containers. Okay, containers cannot run by itself on top of Kubernetes, but it needs to run inside a pods. Yeah, pods will give uh, networks uh, identities. Yeah, it will give identity to the to the con running container uh, inside. Then um, well, MySQL itself, okay, can run as a containers uh, within 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 a pod. We can run single MySQL instance within a pod, or we can run multiple MySQL container uh, in, in a single single pod. Yeah, and each of the container will run only one MySQL instance, and we can we can run uh, MySQL instance side by side uh, with side or side containers. Inside the uh, inside the pods, so our MySQL operators uh, for Kubernetes uh, is using uh, sidecar containers basically to maintain the uh, the clusters inside uh, inside uh, the pods inside the Kubernetes. So NDP cluster is very suitable for running in Kubernetes because resiliency, uh, because NDP cluster is also shared nothing uh, architecture. It can operate without centralized managements or any single point of errors. It's not available in, in NDB clusters. Uh, it is completely high, highly uh, high available. Yeah. And uh, scaling is very easy, and data is shared uh, across the uh, NDB uh, data nodes. And it provides uh, consistency as well. And uh, Standards, yeah, it should support uh, query standards. So uh, SQL node is basically like normal MySQL instance, yeah, uh, normal MySQL instance with NDB uh, storage engine support. So how to deploy NDB clusters on Kubernetes? So typically we have uh, in Kubernetes we know that they have deployments, uh, they have uh, replica set, daemon set, stateful set, and so on, but you know, uh, database is a stateful applications. Yeah, you need to store uh, database data on persistent storage. So the persistent storage is really critical in database. Therefore, um, the models, uh, the models to deploy database on Kubernetes is using a stateful set. So stateful set here in our MySQL operators is used uh, to deploy MDB MTD is a data node, a multi-threaded data nodes. And then NDB MGM, okay, this is management node of the NDB clusters, and MySQL D, okay, this is the SQL node of the NDB clusters. As you see over here, okay, we can create a stateful set consists of three nodes or four or more, okay, and then we can attach a storage into it. How we attach the storage? It requires uh, PV and PVC. PV means uh, persistent volume, PVC means persistent volume claim. PV is like a Kubernetes resource. It's a Kubernetes resource to define uh, the underlying storage so that it can be mounted. Uh, it can be seen uh, from the upper, from, from the resources within the Kubernetes clusters. And PVC or persistent volume claim is like, um, is a definitions, okay, uh, the size, yeah, need uh, from the PV uh, to be mounted uh, inside the uh, stateful set uh, container, yeah, stateful, stateful set pods. In the MySQL context, uh, we know that right, uh, the MySQL database have, has um, my.cnf, and inside my.cnf there is a parameter called datadir, and datadir is always pointing uh, to the directory where database data file uh, is stored, yeah, are stored. So <clears throat> normally, database datadir is pointing to slash file slash slip slash MySQL. Before we need to mount this PVC into uh, this slash file slash slip slash MySQL inside the container, okay? That running within a pod. Yeah. So this is the basic uh, to run MySQL database on Kubernetes. So in the context of NDB, okay, we have 
management node, we have data node, and we have SQL node. Pardon me about the uh, wrong uh, diagram over here. It is not deployment, it is stateful set. So three of them are stateful set. Okay, management node is deployed using stateful set, data node is de deployed using stateful set, and deployment, I think, MySQL node is also using stateful set. And we have uh, CRD. Okay, once you have um, as NDB operators running on your Kubernetes, then you have an uh, additional uh, custom resource, right? Uh, which is MySQL controllers, NDB controllers, and pickup restore controllers. And here it goes. Um, we have uh, NDB uh, management nodes, okay, uh, running within a pod, management node container within a pod. And we also have sidecar containers that are running on the same pod. And the sidecar containers is to manage the management nodes as well as to protect uh, the pods uh, getting failing if the management node fails. So a sidecar container is like uh, protecting the pods uh, for not, you know, it's not failing. Yeah? Uh, so that the uh, um, management node will, will, I mean, management node pods will always be up and running. And management node will need to have a config map. So a config map will be uh, mapped into the management node uh, container. Uh, we also have a pod for data nodes container. Okay, uh, it has a persistent volume claim and persistent volume because data nodes uh, is a component in NDB clusters where data is stored. Okay, although we stop in memory, but in the end of the day, we need to store this data on the disk. Okay, this is how to install NDB operators. Okay, if you have you know, um, Kubernetes clusters running, either using Minikube or Kubernetes Ranchers or whatever it is, okay. Um, and then you can easily install uh, NDB operators using two ways. Okay, we support Helm installations and we support uh, kubectl and yaml installations i show you here is using you know kubectl and yaml okay very much uh, the installation is pretty much uh, simple so once the uh, yaml is executed using kubectl then we will have you know the NDB operators uh, running yeah two pods are running first is the NDB operator itself and secondly is the webhook servers okay to deal with uh, various um, NDB uh, cluster uh, containers. Okay, this is a NDB cluster YAML with minimal configurations. Okay, how to deploy NDB clusters okay, in quick way yeah, in Kubernetes using very minimal configurations. Okay, so I created a sample that YAMLs. Okay, and uh, we can run NDB clusters on custom namespace okay in this uh, demo that i show you i create a new namespace called ndb clusters okay and then uh, on my sample.yamls i mentioned that namespace that i use is ndb clusters then uh, i can have spec something like redundancy level equal to two okay and that are not that are not count is two that means there will be one node group Two divided by two equal to one. So that one data node group consists of two data nodes, and my score node is also two. All right. And since uh, redundancy level is equal to two, then management node is also two. Using kubectl, we can uh, deploy the NDB clusters. Okay, uh, using these YAMLs. Okay, once it is executed, then uh, Kubernetes will spin uh, the NDB clusters. As you see over here, okay, once then, then we will have uh, two pods running management nodes, two pods running data nodes, and two pods running SQL nodes. And all are deployed as stateful set, as you see over here, okay? Three of them, management node, SQL nodes, and data nodes. Okay, then uh, NDB operators is also uh, create uh, three kind of services for uh, management node, MySQL nodes, and uh, data nodes uh, automatically. 
and we can check the status. Okay, once done, we can check the status by logging to any nodes. Okay, in this example, I'm logging to management nodes. Okay, using kubectl n NDP clusters is my namespace, and then minus I, exit minus it, and then the pod, yeah, which is management node, and then the uh, command that I execute, which is NDB underscore MGM minus C connect to itself, yeah, and then minus E show. Then it will show all the NDB uh, cluster uh, node status over there. Okay, as you see over here, the, uh, we have uh, two NDB, uh, sorry, okay, we have two uh, NDB data nodes, okay, with ID three and four. We have two NDB management nodes with ID one and two, and two SQL nodes with ID 148 and 149. So adding SQL not quite simple. So we can just edit the YAML files from two to four and execute. Okay, the next moment we will have additional uh, SQL node running. Yeah, very simple. So uh, we can show the status after adding nodes using the same way as you see over here, we have four SQL nodes, so additional uh, two nodes, uh, SQL nodes. So now, how to access the SQL node? First, we don't know the password. Actually, the NDB uh, operator will create two secrets and save the password inside the secret, okay? Uh, then we need to use uh, P64 minus D to decode, okay, since uh, the secret, the password is safe into secret as P64 encoding. So we need to decode that, and that, that one is the password, so I can, Logging to the one of the SQL node, and then you know using the password, and I, I can I can log in to the uh, SQL nodes. Okay, from there I can I can do a query. I can get the parameter, all those things using uh, you know a view or tables that reside on NDB info. And this one is um, you know a slide that I I want to show to you that this is really uh, active active solutions as you see over there okay I can you know I log in to my SQL node one and I create database I create table test the test with engine NDB don't forget engine is always NDB in order to make the uh, table itself reset on the data nodes and then I insert three records yeah using my SQL D0 then I query okay my SQL D0 and my SQL D1 both are showing uh, three records. Now I'm inserting, okay, uh, record number four and record number five using MySQL D1, okay? Then I query from MySQL D0, as you see over here, okay, MySQL D0 also shows five records. That means it's really active, active. You can connect your application to any MySQL, MySQL node. And this is the best practice, okay? We need to make sure, I mean, we need to make use of uh, pot affinity and anti-affinity. Okay, um, so keep database nodes apart across racks and then avoid collocation of instance uh, sharing the same data and so on. Okay, that's it. Uh, short descriptions about the NDP clusters uh, uh, deployment on uh, Kubernetes. I hope you enjoyed that. Thank you so much for the time.